told me Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is God. I challenge you to point out a single verse in the Bible, a single unequivocal verse from the Bible, a single unambiguous verse in which Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, that most of the Christians, they believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claim divinity. There is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. If you can point out, I am ready to accept Christianity. So if he has not said that, why do you believe he is God? And where did Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, say that he died on the cross for your sins? That is the teaching of Paul. Today I will discuss a particular question which the Muslim apologists such as Ahmad Didad, Sakir Naik, etc. have consistently raised. Did Jesus say, I am God, worship me unambiguously and unequivocally? In fact, the question is an illogical, silly and deceptive excuse for rejecting the Christian faith. Illogical because they falsely assume that if Jesus did not say what they want, Jesus cannot be what he is. The question is silly because they demand God to behave in the way they want. This question is deceptive because it is devised for infusing theological confusion into the minds of people for deviating from the truth in Jesus Christ. Before challenging the Christian faith, the Muslim apologists should prove whether they have an alternative, superior level statement from any historical person saying, I am God, worship me. In fact, Jesus is the only historical person in the entire history of mankind who made clear, irrefutable and undeniable deity claims with evidential proofs of holy character, wonders, miracles and even resurrection from the dead. The Muslim apologists deny the deity, death and resurrection of Jesus. It should be remembered that their view has a disconnect of at least 600 years of time gap and a significant discontinuity of doctrines and values in relation to the Christ event and the Bible. They are taking a very anti-historical and anti-Bible approach in their denial of the Christian faith. By devising such a question, did Jesus say, I am God, worship me? They try to inspire doubt into the average Christian and prompting him to gradually reject the Christian faith if he fails to find such a verse in the Gospels. In fact, such views emanate from the anti-Christian ideological prejudices and the complete unwillingness of the critics to understand and accept the biblical view of the truth. The critics mean to say that if Jesus had said so in the Gospels, then they would believe. But this is not true. In fact, Jesus and the apostles have consistently warned the people about such dangerous views emerging from time to time. Some ask if Jesus is God indeed, why he did not say, I am God? First of all, we should not expect God to speak in the way we want. It's always better to understand why God handled the issue in the way he did. The fact is that Jesus made it sufficiently clear that he is God and that is why so many people from that time onward throughout history believed that Jesus is God. But no amount of evidence can convince a person who is indoctrinated against Christian faith. The purpose of the first coming of Jesus was dying on the cross to solve the sin problem of mankind. Preaching and proving that he was God was not the purpose of his first coming. Jesus did not do or say anything which would go against his primary purpose of dying on the cross. Hence, Jesus even prevented those who recognized his full identity from revealing it to others. 
Thus, after transfiguration, he clearly told his disciples not to say about this to anyone until his resurrection. Jesus will undeniably prove that he is God at his second coming. There is time for everything. There will come a time when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the God Almighty and the only Savior of mankind. Let us be sober. Anyone can make claims. What really matters is action proofs, not just word claims. Jesus talks and acts like God. He always proved his claims by actions which no one else could do. As he is God, he was not in a hurry to declare and prove it, perhaps in the way the critics would like. Jesus never denied that he was God. Rather, he made indirect claims and indications and gave enough proof sufficient for an honest seeker to meaningfully believe. Jesus does not have to prove that he is God. God is not obligated to prove anything to us. After all, it is we humans who are in need of believing that Jesus is God. Hence, raising this suspicious question, did Jesus say, I am God, is illogical and silly excuse for not believing in the clearest historical truth of the deity of Jesus Christ. The question is basically an attempt to deny the deity of God Jesus. The deity of Jesus is the clearest truth in the Bible. The entire Bible and the entire life of Jesus prove this truth. The deity of Jesus is not depending on any particular sentence present or absent in the Bible. The entire Bible is an arrow mark to the deity of Jesus Christ. Perhaps this is the second most dangerous question in the entire history of mankind. The first most dangerous question was, has God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? This question appears in Genesis chapter 3, where Satan through the serpent asked Eve, for deceiving the entire mankind, as God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. This question and the subsequent deception by the devil led to the fall of the entire mankind into sin, death and hell. The key issue here is the failure of man in rightly understanding and practicing the word of God. Adam failed to correctly teach Eve the word he received from God. And Eve failed to understand and practice the word of God correctly. This is what led to the failure of mankind. The second most dangerous question is, did Jesus say, I am God, worship me? Just like the first question, this is a misleading and dangerous question prompting one to reject the deity of Jesus. In this question, the deity of Jesus is falsely reduced to an issue of a few words devised by the critics. It is highly improper to demand God to speak the words we humans desire and demand, even if we show such a verse in the Gospels. The critics will not believe. The Muslim apologists deny the death and resurrection of Jesus in spite of the fact that the same Jesus in the same Gospels repeatedly affirmed the fact of his death and resurrection many times. There are many verses in the Bible in the same Gospels in which Jesus himself is categorically, unambiguously and unequivocally speaking about his own death and resurrection. But they don't believe what Jesus says in the Bible. Moreover, they teach against it. Then, how can they or anyone claim that they will believe that Jesus is God if Jesus had made such a claim? 
Hence, it is sufficiently clear that their question is not a sincere one. Matthew 16, 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show to his disciples how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Again, Matthew 17, 9 says, And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. In Matthew 20, verse 17 says, And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way, and said to them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to whip and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. In Matthew 26, verse 1 and 2 we read, And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. In Matthew 17, verse 22 and 23, we read, And while they stayed in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding sorry. Matthew 26, 31. Then Jesus said to them, All you shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. In John 10, verse 17 and 18 we read, Therefore does my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down for myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. But the critics are unwilling to believe these verses, even though Jesus himself is saying, they think Jesus is a prophet, but don't want to believe what the prophet is saying. Here lies the problem. Thus the critics have already proved their inability and unwillingness to believe in the biblical truth without believing in the already existing basic verses of Jesus. Why ask for more verses on the deeper truth? Without believing what is already there, there is no legitimacy for asking a new one. Is it right to go to class 10? without passing class 2? Is it right to ask for more food without first eating the food already given in the plate? These critics cannot believe in the deity of Jesus because of the barrier prejudices inbuilt in their faith system. It is difficult to wake those who pretend sleeping. It is impossible to prove something to those who are predisposed and determined to reject the biblical truth and all the evidences. The fact is that the faith system of the critics does not permit them to believe in the biblical truth of the deity, death, and resurrection of Jesus. They are victims of the bondage of a predisposition, prejudice, and subjectivism, which command them not to believe in the biblical truth. Let us see an example of this kind of a prejudice in the Jewish high priest. In Matthew 26, verses 63 and 64, we read, The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. Thus, Jesus clearly told the Jews 
that he is the son of God. But they did not believe what Jesus said. But they killed him because they were predisposed or prejudiced against Jesus and wanted to kill him. But it should be remembered that at all times, those who are honest and open to the truth consider that the evidences for the deity, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ are quite adequate. That is why millions around the world believe in Jesus. Critics heavily depend on the Bible whenever they need and deny the Bible whenever it suits them. But the Christians never have to depend on any other scriptures to prove their faith. The ultimate debate of mankind is the debate between Judaism, Christianity and Islam. They are all monotheistic religions. Monotheism believes that there is only one personal God, but they have very fundamental differences. Judaism accepts the need and possibility of God's incarnation or taking human form and is thus waiting for the Messiah Christ. Christianity believes that the incarnation of God was accomplished in Jesus Christ who died as a sacrifice for the sin of mankind and rose from the dead. But Islam does not accept the possibility of God becoming man. Hence, they reject the deity, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They are unable to see the need for the incarnation of God and hence don't accept it. The Jews, Christians, and Muslims believe that Jesus Christ was a historical person. The Jews believe that Jesus was killed by them for deity claims. The Christians believe that Jesus was God and died for the salvation of mankind and resurrected on the third day. The Muslims believe that Jesus was a prophet and Messiah but not killed. Christianity believes that the basic problem of mankind is the most serious issue of sin and the solution for this sin problem is accomplished by the blood sacrifice of Jesus by his death on the cross and the complete victory of the mission is attested by his resurrection. Thus all the religions are not the same because their most fundamental claims are mutually exclusive and contradictory. Similarities are very peripheral and the differences are very, very fundamental. There is no provision for unlimited evidence in faith. God gave enough proof for those who want to believe. In fact, Jesus made both direct and indirect claims which constitute sufficiently clear, unambiguous and unequivocal evidence for those who are honestly willing to believe. This is why millions and millions all over the world for thousands of years believed that Jesus is God in human form. But no amount of evidence will be sufficient for those who are determined to reject the conclusion that Jesus is God. In fact, God has determined a limit to the evidence, leaving enough room for faith. Jesus, in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, speaks of Abraham as saying that, If you cannot believe Moses and the prophets, then even if one rises from the dead, you cannot believe. Thus, the Bible is the maximum evidence level permitted by God. This is God's logic and the provision of faith requirement for salvation. Or else faith is no faith. God will not give whatever evidence we ask for. The books of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms and the Gospels prove that Jesus is God. If you cannot believe Moses and the prophets, 
then no other evidence or philosophy will help you to believe in Jesus and be saved. The Jews said to Jesus, if you come down from the cross, we will believe. Muslims say, if Jesus had said, I am God, worship me, then we will believe. But if God satisfies all our demands for evidence and everything is made so plain, then there is no scope for faith and faith has no value. Then it is no more faith but just rationalization. A direct claim like, I am God, worship me, is bad. Such a direct claim by Jesus, as the Muslim apologists demand, is not the best and the only way of proving the deity of Jesus. Direct speech is just one way of communication. Humans understand many things not because of a direct statement, pertaining to each thing or individual. A mountain, a lion or an elephant do not declare themselves about their identity, but people discern their identities. Likewise, everyone worthy of salvation will identify the deity of Jesus even from the historical facts. Dignitaries are never asked to make such self-declarations and they don't do so. Honorable personalities do not say, I am so and so. It is not honorable to speak in that way. When a national leader visits a foreign nation, he never makes claims such as, I am the US president, I am the Indian president, etc. But if he is questioned, he might affirm it, or at least he would not deny it. But if a person is insisting that he will not accept the leader unless he makes an unambiguous and unequivocal statement like, I am the president of the U.S., accept me as the president, etc., then that's going to be something subrational. Because there are other more reliable evidence sources for his identity than mere self-declaration. How much more undesirable it is to demand such a claim from God Jesus. Thus, it is unfit for God Jesus to say, I am God, worship me. By making such a claim, the God of the Bible will be demeaned. Moreover, a direct claim, I am God, worship me, always invites negative reactions. Suppose a man comes up to you and says, I am God, worship me. Would you believe him? Would you worship him? The first and immediate reaction of any decent monotheistic believer would be to call him an imposter and a blasphemer. Jesus gave deeper and stronger proofs than direct claims. Without making the direct claim, Jesus proved his deity by his character and evidential actions. This is an additional proof for his deity and godly wisdom. With all the evidence in the Bible, an honest person just acknowledges and worships Jesus. If you think that Jesus did not say he is God, at least consider the fact that he did not deny it. Rather, he accepted worship. Jesus proved his deity enough with heavy evidence without direct claims. A direct claim will not add anything to the personal attributes or worth of Jesus. What matters is the evidence, not the claims. If there is clear proof for his divine identity, then you have to worship him even if the wording of his commands is not precisely the way you want. The direct speech by saying, I am God, worship me, is not the best way of expressing it. Almost anybody could make a claim to be God. And many have made such claims in history. 
making the claim in itself does not automatically make a person God. Many crazy people have claimed to be God. Hence, such empty talk is cheap. But the question all of us must answer is, what credentials do we bring to substantiate our deity claims? In the case of ordinary humans, it would not take five minutes to disprove their claims. But when it comes to the person of Jesus of Nazareth, it is not that simple. He had the credentials to back up his claim. Rather, his credentials are bigger than his claims. A lion does not have to make self-declarations about its identity. Only the true God can give true evidence for deity claims. And when you have the evidence, there is no need for the explicit command to worship. Those who are open to the truth will recognize the evidence. And those who ignore the evidence will never be convinced. Actions are more important than words. It is wiser to know the deity of Jesus from his actions and character than just words. Performing the functions of God incarnate is more important. Actions and character are more authentic than words. In the case of any person, it is the actions and character, not mere words, which would ultimately prove his real identity. That is the case of God Jesus. What matters is not having a few words of our liking in the Bible. Those who believe in Jesus never had such a problem. Only the critics have the problem. The wise will capture the clue and realize that there is a preponderance of evidence in favor of the deity of Jesus and hence believe. Jesus lived with evidential actions rather than mere words. Consider the question posed by John the Baptist to Jesus in Matthew 11 verses 2 to 5. When in prison, John sent forth some of his disciples to Jesus and asked him, Are you the expected one, that is Messiah, or are we to expect someone else? But Jesus answered and said to them, Go and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive the sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Jesus was answering their question by pointing to his works. In John chapter 10, verses starting from 24, the Jews asked Jesus, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, these testify of me. He said, Even though you do not believe me, believe the evidence of the miracles that you may learn and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. The Jesus style is of making indirect deity claims combined with the direct God-level actions constituting the supreme proof for his deity. But the common feature of mere humans is to claim more and deliver less. But Jesus claims less but acted enough to match any deity claims we might imagine. Indirect claims are stronger than direct claims. The indirect claims of Jesus to his deity were much stronger and clearer than if he had said, I am God, worship me. Jesus claimed deity indirectly by claiming equality with God the Father, claiming the attributes of God, 
and by real actions which only God can do. If Jesus had made the direct claim, then the critics would say, Jesus is a false prophet. The proof for the possibility of this kind of a behavior is that even though Jesus did not say those exact words, but only indirectly claimed deity, the Jews accused him of blasphemy and crucified. There are reasons why Jesus avoided the direct claim. In the New Testament, Jesus might not have literally said, I am God, because even the term God is subject to different meanings according to the context. The term God had many meanings in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, the plural form of Theos denoted false gods. In the Old Testament, Elohim referred to the true God as in Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 10. Judges as in Exodus 21 6. False gods as in Psalms 96 verse 5. In Exodus chapter 7 1, the Lord said to Moses, See, I make you as God, Elohim, to Pharaoh. Of course, Moses was not actually made deity, but only as God's direct representative, he was made as God to the Pharaoh. The point is, Moses, judges, angels, etc. were called gods, even though they were not God by nature. So, if Jesus would have stated, I am God, those who deny the deity of Jesus could argue that the phrase only means that Jesus was merely claiming that he was a representative of God or a perfect judge or a mighty angel. However, the claims of Jesus to the deity were much stronger and clearer than if he had said, I am God. Jesus made specific indirect claims to express his deity some of which were used only of Yahweh in the Old Testament. This fact was clearly understood by both the friends and the enemies as claims to be equal with God because these claims were not used by nor were applied to humans or angels as with the term God. Please take note of the following claims which explicitly demonstrate that Jesus did indeed claim to be equal with God in the same sense as God the Father. The deity claims of Jesus were deeper than uttering a few words because Jesus was claiming the attributes of God and proving the claims to be true by performing the acts which only God could do. The I am statements of Jesus are very convincing and undeniable. In John 8 verse 24, Jesus declared, For if you should not believe that I am, you will perish in your sins. Many translations add the pronoun he after I am, even though the pronoun is not contained after I am in any Greek manuscripts of John 8.24. The pronoun is also not contained after Jesus' other I am affirmations in John 8.28, 58, 13.19, 18.5, 6 and 8. Jesus claimed that he was the I am seven times in the Gospel of John. These instances are absolute I am claims with no supplied predicate. Hence, they are not the same as statements such as, for example, I am the door or I am the shepherd. These all have predicates following I am, whereas the seven I am statements listed above have no supplied predicate, but rather the I am stands alone. 
clearly this is an absolute and clear claim to deity. It is when we take all the I am statements do we see the thrust of his claim. This was a strong affirmation of the deity of Jesus. It is well proved from the response of the Jews in verse 59. They wanted to stone him, which clearly shows that the Jews understood Jesus' claim as an unequivocal claim to be God. Jesus claimed to be the I am was essentially a claim to be Yahweh, not a mere judge, angel or representative of God, but Yahweh. Jesus never said, I am not God and do not worship me. Rather, he proved to be God indirectly by his words and deeds and accepted worship. Jesus never directly claimed even to be a prophet. The claims of Jesus to be a prophet were indirect and valid. It is worth noticing that Jesus makes an indirect claim of being a prophet when he said, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own household. It is this same indirect method Jesus uses to declare his deity also. Hence, it is clear that the deity claims of Jesus are indirect, valid and authentic. Jesus might not have said the exact three words, I am God. But Jesus also never said the exact four words, I am a prophet, or the exact four words, I am a man. But most skeptics acknowledge that Jesus was both a prophet and a man. It is not necessary for Jesus to say the exact phrase, I am a man, for us to know that he was a man. Likewise, it is not necessary for Jesus to utter the exact three words, I am God, in order for us to determine whether or not he is divine. Jesus may not have said the exact sentence, I am God, but he did claim a divine name for himself, as in Exodus 3 verse 14 and John 8 15. And he also received worship, as in Matthew 2 2, 14.33, 28.9, and John 9.35-38. There are many Bible verses which make indirect claims indicating that Jesus is God. One expression is, I and the Father are one, in John chapter 10, verse 30. The response of the Jews in verse 33 is an irrefutable confirmation of Jesus' claim to be God. For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, and because you being a man make yourself out to be God. Another expression is the shepherd of the people. In verses 27 to 29, Jesus claims that he is the shepherd and he gives his sheep eternal life and no one can snatch them from his or his father's hand. The Jews were familiar with Psalm 95 verse 7. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Knowing that only Yahweh can make this claim of having sheep in his hand as well as giving them eternal life as we can see also in Isaiah 43 verse 11. When Jesus made this exact claim and then added, I and the Father are one, it is easy to understand the response of the Jews. You being a man, make yourself out to be God. At this, the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? 
In John 20 verse 28 we see, Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, Before Abraham was born, I am. At this, they picked up stones to stone him. We should notice that I am is the name of God used for himself when he spoke to Moses. Stoning was the punishment for blasphemy prescribed in the Mosaic law. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. In Colossians 2, 9, we see, For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. In Matthew 1, we read, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Isaiah 9, 6 reads, For unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. These are all clear proofs for the biblical provision for God becoming man in Jesus. In 2 Peter 1, verse 1, we read, To those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. In John 5 we read, My Father has been walking until now and I have been walking. Therefore the Jews sought to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath but also said that God was his Father making himself equal with God. In John 5 23 we read, that all should honor the Son just as they should honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. In John 8, 24, Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. In John 14, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In John 14, 9, Jesus said to him, I have been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Luke 24, starting from verse 38, the resurrected Jesus says, All things about me in the law of Moses, prophets and psalms must be fulfilled, and Christ be killed and rise. These are absolute statements which are true in all situations, respective of context, of time, place, culture, or intellectual level of audience. And the primary meaning do not change according to the situations. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12 we read, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. In Acts 20, verse 28, God purchased us with his own blood. In Revelation 1 we read, Jesus' blood purchased us. Philippians 2, we read, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, 
justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. In Titus chapter 2, we read, Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. In Hebrew chapter 1, verse 8, But to the Son, He, God says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. In Revelation 21, He who overcomes shall inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. In Revelation chapter 22, I am the Alpha and the Omega, and the beginning and the end, the first and the last. In Revelation 22 verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time, who is the blessed and the only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. In John 11, verse 25, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. He makes the offer of eternal life conditional on faith in his own person. This would be blasphemous for anybody other than God. This is an incredible claim. Does he give any evidence for this authority to make such claims? The record gives many details of what happened at this particular day. At the end, we read, When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. When Moses was up at the mount, speaking to God, Moses asked God what his name was. God said, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. We see this in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. And in John chapter 8 verse 58, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. Right after this, the Jews picked up stones to throw at him. Later, in John chapter 10, from verse 30 onwards, Jesus claimed to be one with the Father. And the Jews wanted to stone him again because they said to Jesus, You being a man, make yourself out to be God. Jesus had claimed the divine name for his own and the Jews wanted to kill him for it. Therefore, from Jesus' own mouth, we see that he was claiming to be God. Jesus says that before Abraham was born, using the past tense, and then he switches to the present tense when he says, I am. Jesus was clearly causing the Jews to reflect upon the divine name I am that Jesus used for himself. We know that they understood this because they said, You being a man, make yourself out to be God. Jesus correctly prophesied in John 16 too, They will kill you thinking they do service to God. Thus, there is enough proof in the Bible that Jesus is God. Those who are not prejudiced to reject his deity can easily believe in God Jesus. Jesus as man 
can be considered less than God the Father. The Bible explains this in Philippians chapter 2 as not capture equality with God but became human. Thus, Father is greater in functional relationship but in essence both the Father and the Son are one. But Jesus' name is greater than all other names and every knee shall bow before Jesus. Demons are cast out in Jesus' name, not in Father's name. Jesus is from the above and came down from heaven. If you don't believe in God Jesus, the judgment is already come. In historical chronology, Jesus came after John the Baptist. But before becoming human, he was even before Abraham. John said, one is coming after me, and he was before me. Jesus had said that if you do not believe in the Son, you have no life and is under judgment. Jesus claimed that when he will come as judge, he will reject before the Father those who had rejected him on the earth. These indirect claims accompanied with direct evidences constitute the undeniable evidence for the deity of Jesus. Jesus made indirect claims for his deity in the Gospels. Moreover, when you read the Gospels carefully, you will find that Jesus consistently acts like God. Jesus gives evidence for claiming this authority rightfully by performing miraculous signs and displaying spotless character. Thus, there is more proof for the deity of Jesus than for his prophethood. It was the clear policy of Jesus not to publicize his deity. Jesus commanded those who recognized his full identity not to tell anyone about it. After the transfiguration, Jesus told his disciples not to say anyone about it before his death and resurrection. In Matthew 16, 15, Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. In Mark chapter 1, He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. In Mark chapter 3, whenever the evil spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. But he gave them strict orders not to tell who he was. In Luke chapter 4, moreover, demons came out of many people shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew he was the Christ. Matthew chapter 12 And he healed all their sick, warning them not to tell who he was. Matthew 8 Immediately he was cured of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, See that you don't tell anyone. Mark chapter 5 Immediately the dead girl stood up and walked around. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this. There is reason why Jesus the Messiah did not clearly reveal his deity. The purpose of the first coming of Jesus was dying for the sins of mankind and not proving that he is God, which will be done at the second coming. If he said it openly, categorically, unequivocally, unambiguously, etc., and proved that he is God at that time, which was not impossible for him, then he would not be killed. And the primary purpose of his first coming, which was dying for the sins of mankind, would have been defeated. Hence, Jesus insisted his disciples not to tell others that he is Christ. God Jesus had no desire for popularity and worship. Some humans are hungry to be recognized as scholars, 
rich and famous but as jesus was truly god he was not in a hurry to prove it jesus is the son of god he is not the son of some earthly king who must show his might and save his pride by appearing to be victorious in the eyes of the world according to the world standards hence jesus would not use his power for selfish purposes to the honest and faithful persons jesus revealed more of himself jesus reveals more and more of himself only to those who truly love him we find this in john chapter 14 whoever has my commandments and keeps them he it is who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and i will love him and manifest myself to him judas not is carried said to him lord how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world jesus answered him if anyone loves me he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him in first corinthians chapter 2 no we speak of god's secret wisdom a wisdom that he has been hidden and that god destined for our glory before time began none of the rulers of this age understood it for if they had they would not have crucified the lord of glory no mind has conceived what god has prepared for us who love him but god has revealed it to us by his spirit we have received it the spirit who is from god that we may understand what god has freely given us in fact god's word is filled with statements about god's secret wisdom understood only by those whom god reveals it in deuteronomy 29 29 we read the secret things belong to the lord our god but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may follow all the words of this law in jeremiah 33 verse 3 call to me and i will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know in colossians chapter 2 we can see that they may know the mystery of god namely christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge the mystery of christ thus we can notice the different levels of self revelation of jesus to different groups of people to the rebels and their dishonest demands jesus never responded jesus never took up tricky challenges such as show us a sign come down from the cross etc but jesus always reveals himself to the honest demands of peter philip thomas etc when jesus talked to his disciples in private or to sincere seekers of the truth he did acknowledge that he is the son of god at times jesus accepted worship jesus had the clear policy of giving no sign to those who challenge with arrogance jesus never responded to challenges from those who tried to test or tempt him this is a proof of his power and authority jesus was challenged to come down from the cross but would not but after finishing his ministry of paying for the sin of the mankind by his death on the cross he rose from the dead and appeared to his believing disciples and not to the murderers high priests and politicians if jesus had responded to the challenge and came down from the cross his entire ministry and god's redemptive plan for mankind would have been spoiled hence after dying on the cross jesus rose from the dead what a fitting reply jesus would not demonstrate anything miraculous to those who refused to believe in him but jesus always responded to those who were in need of him 
This is how he operated. He did the same after his resurrection and appeared to those who knew him and followed him. After resurrection, he did not appear to the murderous high priests and politicians to stage a counter challenge. Rather, he appeared to those who really loved him, who were heartbroken at his suffering. The encounter with the resurrected Jesus totally changed the disciples. This resurrection power of Jesus imparted unto them, enabled them to turn the world upside down. This is how God Jesus, who is really powerful, did respond to the challenges in his own way, not in the way we want or even imagine. God's ways are higher than our ways. We should at least understand this much. Jesus plainly taught that he would not perform for those who denied him. However, he did public miracles in order to validate who he was, God in flesh. This great truth is a matter of faith and is not something proven with a calculator or a camera. Jesus claimed to be the son of God, which in that culture meant to claim equality with God. Jesus said that before Abraham was, I am, a statement that infuriated the Jews who were familiar with God's self-description to Moses in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14 when he said, I am that I am. Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. It is a claim made by real evidence. The evidence was his miracles. Remember, it was a word the Jews were afraid to even utter. But now Jesus here claims to be I am and proves his claim by miracles. What more proof we need? Jesus refused to prove his identity when he was challenged to do so. In Matthew chapter 4, we see Satan tempted Jesus saying, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, etc. In Matthew 27, we see the common people challenge Jesus. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, Save yourself, come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In Matthew 27, the chief priests, teachers and elders challenged Jesus. He saved others, but he can't save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. For he said, I am the son of God. God-like behavior, actions and claims of Jesus prove his deity. When we read the Gospels carefully, we find the deity talk of Jesus consistently. We notice that Jesus talks like he is God and acts like he is God. Jesus gives evidence for claiming his authority rightfully by performing miraculous signs. His actions and claims spoke very loud. Jesus thought of himself as God. When we consider that Jesus accepted worship, claimed to have authority over God's law, and spoke using his own authority, it seems clear that Jesus did think of himself as God. When he accepted worship, he was saying that he was God. He is proving his identity by deeds, not mere words. Actions speak louder than words. Jesus talked like God. Never man spoke like Jesus. Jesus talks about the kingdom of God as my kingdom. God is the source of life. And Jesus says he is life, light of the world, the way and resurrection. His great I am statements are spectacular. Moreover, his statements like follow me, come to me, I say, etc. are unique. No mere leader, prophet or angel can speak like this. Only God can speak like Jesus spoke. The superior 
ethics, values, character and holiness of Jesus prove his deity. Jesus is unquestionably the best human character ever lived in human history in matters of holiness, character, ethics and values as proven from his life, words and deeds. There are other signal evidences for the deity of Jesus. Jesus was killed for claiming to be God. The Jews had accused that Jesus claimed to be God. And Jesus never denied the fact of his deity. Jesus prophesied his death and resurrection many times in the Gospels. Jesus died as prophesied, risen as prophesied, sent Holy Spirit as prophesied, and will come again as prophesied in the Bible. Jesus had no urge to prove himself. The supreme easiness and the confidence with which Jesus did what is impossible for mankind proves his deity. The majestic perfection in the character of Jesus during his trial and death also proves his deity. Four courts could not find any fault with Jesus, but he was sentenced to be killed due to the compulsion of the Jews. The only accusation against him was that he claimed to be God. He was not suffering as a helpless victim. There was no attempt to escape from his side. He was willingly laying down his life for mankind. There was no compromise speaking. He handled everyone with majestic dignity. Every action and reaction was perfect and godly. Jesus was in God's style. His actions speak louder than words. The Bible is full of prophecies about the virgin birth, death and resurrection of the divine Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible from the very beginning to the end is profuse with prophecies concerning the coming of the promised Messiah who is greater than a prophet or an angel. He is the Son of God who is God himself. The details of the birth, death, resurrection and the second coming of Jesus Christ are also clearly prophesied in the Bible long before the actual events took place. The Old Testament depicted the death and resurrection of Jesus through the prophecy words and the typologies of sacrifices, offerings, temple, etc. Jesus admitted that he is the Son of God and received worship. Often others had declared that Jesus is the Son of God and Jesus agreed. God the Father said, This is my beloved Son. Jesus agreed. Peter said, You are the Son of God. Jesus agreed. Thomas called Jesus God. Jesus agreed. The meaning of the biblical words and phrases are determined by the context as with the term Elohim. In the Jewish context, to be the son of something meant that one possesses or shares the nature of that something. Whereas Christians are sons of God by adoption, Jesus is the son of God by nature, which was a clear claim of deity. Son of God is truly God the Son. In John 5, when Jesus said, My father is working until now, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him because he was calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. The Jews clearly understood that by claiming that God was his father, Jesus was claiming to be equal with God. Many people spoke to Jesus calling him the son of God and he never denied it. Jesus very seldom called himself the son of God. But he did not deny it when the Jews demanded that he say clearly whether or not he was the son of God. If you are the Christ, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I asked you, you would not answer. But from now on, the son of man will be seated 
at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You are right in saying, I am. In Matthew 26, we read, The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. Christ is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Messiah. In Matthew 27, we read, He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God, Matthew 14. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Luke chapter 8 When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the evil spirit to come out of this man. Jesus certainly implied he was the Son of God by repeatedly calling God his Father. When the disciples asked, Show us the Father, Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. In John chapter 17, Jesus prayed, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Jesus never denied the fact that he was the Son of God or the God himself. The all-important question he put to those who followed him was, Who do you say I am? When Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus was not shocked, nor did he rebuke Peter. On the contrary, he commanded him. When Jesus was questioned by the high priest in Matthew 26, I charge you under oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus replied, Yes, it is as you say. Even the demons knew who he was, that is the Son of God. They obeyed him. His claim that he was the Son of God was so widespread that even the Roman centurion at the cross was familiar with it and said he was really the Son of God. Hence Jesus received worship. This was a declaration that he was indeed God. Even though Jesus never demanded the worship, he accepts it and confirms it as proper. In John chapter 20 and Matthew chapter 28, we read how Jesus receives worship and affirms this. In John 5.22, Jesus states that the purpose of the Father giving all judgment to him was for the result of all honoring the Son in the same way he would honor the Father. The honor that is given to the Father is clearly religious honor, namely worship. Thus Jesus asserts his essential equality with God by confirming that the worship or honor 
given to the father should also be given to the son. And if one does not worship or honor the son, he or she does not honor the father who sent him. Denying the deity of Jesus is the biggest possible risk. I am God, worship me kind of statement is not indeed needed for Christian faith. Demanding more than sufficient evidence is arrogant unbelief. The critics are predisposed not to believe and their arguments do not have enough historical evidence and reasoning value. God may not be interested in those who deliberately reject him. Remember, the God of the Bible is not a desperate God, somehow begging for our worship and giving you any evidence you ask for. Incarnation is the supreme manifestation of the love of God. When you deny the incarnation and the death of Jesus on the cross, you also deny the supreme love of God. Those who reject the death and resurrection of Jesus deny the biggest love gesture of God in the history of mankind and the only way for salvation and thus commit the unforgivable sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit and are at the entry point of eternal damnation in hell. Rejecting the deity of Jesus is rejecting the only possible answer to mankind. If you don't believe in the deity of Jesus and his redemptive work, you will be the biggest loser. There is no prophet other than Jesus who could dare say, he who believes in me or abides in me has eternal life or ask the people to follow me. Nor could any other prophet state that there are massive consequences for not believing who he said he is. There is probably no more of an important statement than when Jesus said to the people, for if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So, if you don't believe, you will be the biggest loser. No other God candidate ever came and said such blessings if you believe. And punishment if you don't believe in such a way no one can ignore. If you do worship somebody who is not God, you are guilty of idolatry. But refusing to worship God when he demands so is just as great a sin. The acid test of the truth is by the blood test. Demons fear the name of Jesus only. In the blood name of Jesus, demons are cast out around the world. You can easily see this by watching the TB Joshua YouTube videos. It is a proof of the deity of Jesus. Only in Jesus' name the demons go. Christians never wage physical war to promote their faith truth. This is the proof that Christian truth is never afraid that it will be defeated. Jesus is the complete revelation of God and Christians have to just preach Jesus. Adding more to it or taking away from it or going against it are grave mistakes. The most logical and safest position for any person is accepting Jesus as his only Savior and God. Because no belief system in the world claims that simply because one believes in Jesus, one will go to hell. So anyone can safely believe in Jesus. But on the other hand, those who reject Jesus have the infinitely dangerous alternative of eternal damnation in hell. Because the Bible, which is the most authentic source of spiritual information on earth, categorically warns that those who reject Jesus shall be punished with eternal hell. The Christian faith is historically verifiable, logical and objective faith. 
those who reject the Christian faith can never stand on a more logical faith. So, go for the best. <laughs>